Oh boy. Today, we're gonna be talking the GoPro accessories. Yes, the GoPro, it's still relevant. I think this is like the coolest little camera. And if you shoot extreme sports and you wanna get right in the action, I think this is the best camera for the job. Today, I'm gonna be talking about my favorite GoPro accessories so that when you're out on location, you always get the perfect shot. A few weeks ago, Lee and I were hired to film a promo video for a new mega yacht that's here in our community. This yacht is going to be chartered off the coast of Puerto Rico. I think it's like $150,000 a week. $150,000 a week. So if you watch those shows like Below Deck, it's definitely one of those sort of experiences. And to help capture the excitement that you could have if you chartered this boat, they needed an awesome video. Well, of course, most of the best shots are gonna be taken from the sky with the drone, or maybe just some wide angle shots on a gimbal of the rooms and the suites and all the amenities. But as we got out there, it became pretty apparent that some of the most exciting video clips that we were gonna film were actually gonna be taken on a GoPro. Now, this is the GoPro 11. Of course, there's different models, so you wanna make sure that any of the accessories that I'm gonna show you today, they fit the model of camera that you have. But for me, I kinda thought the GoPro is an overrated camera. I've used it for 10, 15 years now. And shockingly, I actually went out with some old GoPro 5 cameras, and when I downloaded the footage, I immediately realized what used to look amazing 10 years ago now looks unusable when you compare it to something like the GoPro 11 Black. So I don't even know all the specs of this camera. I know it shoots 4K, 60 frames per second. It might even be a little bit larger if you want. And then you have different uh, fields of view. The thing with the GoPro that makes it so exciting is that this thing is so lightweight and small and now waterproof that you can literally put it anywhere if you can mount it. And in many cases, you can put this camera in a place that you would never be able to put a professional DSLR or mirrorless camera or something like that. So I wanted this video to kind of showcase maybe five accessories you have to have, but then in looking at all of the stuff that I've used on this shoot, I had way more than five. So I'm just gonna go through all of it and maybe you'll find some of these accessories useful in the type of shooting that you do. If so, go to the description below. I have links to everything featured in this video. This video is sponsored by Click-A-Snap, which is a brand new social media platform. It's one part Instagram, one part Shutterstock, and one part Google AdSense all wrapped into one. The most unique element of Click-A-Snap is that you get paid up to $9 for every 1,000 views your images get which is honestly much more than we get paid on YouTube. And if you want, you can choose to sell your photos on the platform as well. Unlike every other social media platform with Click -a Snap, you don't have to give up your image rights, you don't have to figure out how to game some algorithm, and there's no data harvesting or selling to third-party entities. If you're a photographer looking for a new way to display your work while also making money, join Click -a Snap in the link below. All right, let's talk about every piece of grip that I used in this video. And let's start with the most unsexy piece of grip that you're gonna use with your GoPro. And that is the basic little parts that you can use to mount this to something. Now, I recently bought a bunch of these after this shoot because I realized I had a huge problem with the ones that I brought on the boat. These are made by Hey You. I also have another one here by Suptig. I don't know who comes up with these names. And basically, these are just replacement parts that come with your GoPro. These are all plastic, and they're little pieces that allow you to mount them to a helmet or mount them to any one quarter inch thread. And then, of course, you have all the little pieces that intertwine and lock in so that you can mount your GoPro you know, on an arm and articulate it and get it in the perfect position. Now, I had a bunch of these accessories on the boat, but many of the ones that I bought years ago in preparation for a shoot like this were these, like, aluminum pieces, they're colored, they look really cool, they had great reviews. But one thing that I found when I got out on location is that for some reason, when you start mixing and matching these, like even right now, they look like they fit, but I don't know if it's the weather or the temperature or the water or what, but when I started locking these down, in many cases, they wouldn't lock down real tight. In fact, if I take some of these and match them up, I don't know if you'll be able to see this on camera, but the tolerances are off just enough that they wouldn't necessarily get tight or sometimes they wouldn't fit at all. So I have completely abandoned 
all of these really nice colored connectors that I bought. And I'm sticking just with the plastic ones. Now, plastic, of course, doesn't corrode. So if you take this in the salt water, you're gonna have no issues there. But I think because the plastic bends a little bit more than the metal, you can really crank these down and I find that they hold a lot better. So I wound up buying a lot of these pieces. I like to have a ton of spares. Something's always gonna break or you're gonna lose it. And in many cases, I'm trying to build these arms like this where I can mount my camera further away from the actual connector to whatever device I'm connecting it to so that I can get the camera to one pivot in every direction that I need it. But I also wanna be able to place it further away from the action so that I can get a full shot. All right, before going into the next pieces, let me show you some two things that aren't really GoPro related at all. The first one is just some surveyor's line here. Now you could use fishing line, you could use any kind of string. But why I like to bring this is many times we're gonna be mounting GoPros to sports shooters. They're gonna be wakeboarders, kiteboarders, boats that are in motion. And if somehow the camera comes detached, I want to have a safety cord. So as you can see here, I've used this same string and I have mounted it to where I can tie it off on like a wakeboarder's boot so that if the suction cup that I'm gonna show you here in a minute comes loose, this thing will be able to withhold the pressure of that, we'll be able to keep the GoPro and we don't lose it, and the athlete can say, oh, it fell off, it's time to let go and reposition everything. So I can't tell you how important it is to go ahead and secure your GoPro with something that's definitely not gonna break. Now looking back, I'd probably recommend using some kind of uh, fishing line, although it might be harder to deal with or it gets tangled easier. Because it is clear, it's not gonna show up in your shots. Sometimes I would tie this off and there would be some little piece of the rope that would be dangling in front of the camera and then you notice it. So if you can try to get fishing line, I think that would probably work the best. And quickly, let me just mention that having a wrench or a screwdriver where you can tighten everything is really clutch. You could use a screwdriver here on the ends of these or you can use this to kind of clamp down and, and really crank it a little harder than you can do with your fingers. I found that many times I was just not able to get the camera locked down perfectly. Sometimes it was because I had these older connectors that I said I didn't like, but other times it was just I couldn't get a good enough grip to tighten it down. So having a screwdriver or a wrench like this is definitely useful. All right, with that all out of the way, let's talk the most popular mount, and that's probably the suction cup. I have two different suction cups here. I actually have a third one somewhere around here, but I found that the third one started getting a little old and it wasn't working real well. So this one is made by Bodhi Floaty, and this one's kind of nice because it floats. Now, of course, if you start adding a lot of grip and heavy cameras to this, it may not float, but uh, just with a single GoPro on here like this, it should float pretty well. This one has three suction cups and you just kind of push it down. This one's really secure, but depending on the surface, sometimes the wakeboards that we were using had just a little bit of texture and this wouldn't lock down real well. This one I feel like is pretty good. And then you can just slide it off like that to release it. But if you wanna get something a little bit better, this one's made by Small Rig. And this one has two more uh, industrial type suction cups without it being the heavy duty ones that you might use say like on a car shoot. And basically these just snap down like this and they tighten a lot better than just these smaller suction cups. And then instead of having to slide this one off, you can just pop up the edges and it lifts right up. So I got this and it kind of allows you to have dual redundancy and it also has a much better mount. This one just has the single mount on it that you would put the GoPro right here. But this one has a whole bracket where you can kind of control it. And I like this bracket because it, it appears to be made out of plastic. So it's not gonna corrode and also it tightens really, really well. Maybe over the years it'll be prone to breaking, but so far this thing's held up really well. Again, when mounting suction cups, I always tie a piece of string and then tie my whole rig to something so that if it does give way, it's not falling into the ocean. Or if you're doing something on land or in, in the air, you don't want this thing departing and uh, hurting somebody else or causing problems. Now, speaking of floating, one thing I did not have on this shoot that I went out and bought immediately after the shoot was this thing. This is the official GoPro float. And the way this thing works is you just push your GoPro straight into this, and it still gives you access to the bottom so that you can mount everything nice and tight. And then you have access to the two buttons that you have on the GoPro here. So you can do your power on, your shooting, or you know your quick shoot. And the nice thing is this is easy to see, but also if this now falls off, it floats. So keep in mind, if you add a bunch of grip, it may get to the point where it can't float anymore. But in many cases, we were shooting in areas that were like 20 or 30 feet deep. So if it were to sink and you had to snorkel or scuba dive down to find your GoPro, this makes it a whole lot easier seeing it. 
And one other thing that I like about this is you can see I've already scuffed it up a little bit. Sometimes I like to place this camera really close to the ground and it's just nice to know that if it's going to accidentally hit the gravel or something, it's gonna scrape against this instead of scraping into my camera. Now let's talk about perhaps the most useful piece of grip that I have for the GoPro. And it's kind of a silly piece, but it is this. Yes, the selfie stick. Now, a lot of the footage that I wound up shooting I found that the GoPro, it's just so wide that you need to be right on top of your uh, action. If you're, tw if you're 10, 20 feet away, I feel like the GoPro is almost useless. I would not use this camera at all if my subject matter was 10 or 15 feet away. But if you can get this really close to the action, the footage looks unbelievable. That's kind of the selling point of the GoPro. The problem is, as we had kiteboarders going and I'm trying to sit in the water and have them kite over me, I was having a hard time getting them to come close enough to the camera. So then I realized, well, if I get on a jet ski and have a driver and I sit on the back, I can get a lot closer and follow the action and this way the camera is moving along with my kiteboarders or wakeboarders. But the problem is I still wasn't close enough. So what I wound up doing was mounting the GoPro on a selfie stick and then as you can see in some of these shots of the ski bob, I was able to get the GoPro almost right on top of my athletes. I could dip this in the water, I could get nice reveal shots. It just allowed me to have a lot of flexibility. Now this one is made by Smart Tree. Now of course you can find these everywhere on Amazon. This one I would say is about, I don't know, four feet long. Keep in mind when these get extended and you're trying to like balance them really far away, your arms are gonna get really tired, especially if you're trying to hold on to say a jet ski or you know, hanging out of a car or something. So keep that in mind. You might even want some kind of like balancing weight here. I've attached some other little floats here. These are made by Nordic Flash. And while I don't know that the two of these are enough to allow this whole apparatus to float, it was easy to identify it quickly. It kind of slowed this down when it did fall out of my hands. And of course, again, if you're diving down, you can easily see these a lot better. So these are some pretty cool floats that also detach really easily. Makes it perfect for something like this. Now, sometimes you might just want to mount a camera in a unique place that gives you that first person view or maybe that third person view where you're looking back at like the jet ski driver and you want the camera right in front of them. Normally, I would use one of these. These are called the Magic Arm made by Manfrotto. And basically it's a clamp that you can clamp anywhere that you want. And then you can move the camera exactly where you want it. And then with this nice little twist ball, you can secure and lock the camera down. Now for a lot of the shoot, I did wind up using this, but I found that it's so heavy that it was really cumbersome for a lot of the athletes. Also, if this thing were to come off, this is gonna sink like a stone. And so while this is great for larger camera gear, I found that it really wasn't the best for a GoPro. One shot that I did use this super clamp with was a shot with a wakeboarder. I clamped this down on the ski rope and then I was able to you know, have the camera right there shooting in his face. But what I wound up doing later was I bought some smaller magic arms. Now these are also made by the company Small Rig and I bought two of these and these weigh much, much less, but they're gonna be perfect for the GoPro size camera. Now on top of this, as you can see, I have two of them. I have mounted something called a cheese plate. And basically what this is, is a little piece of aluminum that has a bunch of different threadings and you can kind of combine multiple pieces of gear to this. So it is a little tricky getting these things off. I can't say this is like the easiest thing to mount, but once you get them on there, basically you can mount this however you want. Now I'll show you an example of this maybe outside with my golf cart is I can now, instead of mounting the camera on one of these arms, which is going to introduce a lot of bounce, I can now have two arms and I can secure it in two different places. That gives me a little bit more redundancy in terms of safety, but it's also gonna give me a lot of stability. And then using one of these standard GoPro mounts that has the one quarter inch screw on the bottom, I can then screw my GoPro directly on top. And then I do have to loosen this and finagle it a little bit, but I can basically position the camera anywhere I want. Now these are only about eight inches long, so they're not gonna boom the camera really far from my action. But I find with the GoPro, you want it really close, but sometimes if it's too close, the framing looks a little strange. So just pushing the camera away eight to 12 inches sometimes is all that you need. If you start booming it too far, say with the selfie stick, if it's pointed back at you, you're gonna wind up having the stick or the grip in the shot itself. 
and it kind of takes away from the production. We did have some jet ski shots where the girls are holding the selfie stick and you can see it in their arm. I don't think it really ruins the vibe because it kind of looks like something a tourist would be doing anyway. But for all of these other shots, I find that putting the camera maybe four to 12 inches away from the area that it's mounted to really helps improve the shot. Now, one thing that I did learn is I have a much smaller arm here made by small rigs. And as you can see, I did not wash this off quick enough. I think this sat overnight or maybe it was several nights and it is completely corroded. So some of this gear is made of aluminum and I don't believe that this will corrode, although it's a little lighter of a metal to where it does chip and nick. So this probably isn't gonna last forever as well. But if you buy any of this stuff and you use it, especially in salt water like we are, definitely make sure you clean and take it all apart so that um, you know this one right here, even when it's completely loose, I mean, I can't even move, like this one moves a little bit, but then this one is completely corroded together to where this side never pivots. So this one's almost kind of useless now, but lesson learned the hard way, right? Now there's a couple other little mounts that I didn't really use, but you guys are probably all familiar with this one. This mount just allows you to put this like on the handlebar of a bike or something like that. That's super useful. One piece of gear that I brought out with me that I thought was gonna work, but I didn't get to use is this thing. This is made by Telesyn, and I'm not really sure what you would call this. Maybe it's like a GoPro port, but essentially what this does is it allows you to mount your GoPro inside this bubble, and then because now the bubble sits a few inches away from the front of the lens, it now allows you to do these really interesting shots where you could have the camera right on the water line, and you're gonna be able to see halfway above the water, but then also see underwater. And this would be really cool, especially for those sea bobs where they're going up and below the water. This would have been a cool uh, piece of gear to have. Or if we rode a ski bob, I could potentially have the wake, you know, passing right by the camera and you can see both the ski bob going underwater, but then also see the water coming at you. Um, you can also do some cool diving shots where people jump and you see them jump in the water, but then instead of having to pull the camera down with them, you could just see their lower part of the body dive into the water. The reason this didn't work previously was the older version that I had did not fit the GoPro 11. So if you buy one of these ports, you wanna make sure that they fit the exact model that you have. This basically just slips right in here and then it seals it up. Now keep in mind the GoPro 11 is waterproof, so it doesn't even really need the seal, but you don't want any water to get into the port. And then now everything can be controlled here and you could uh, have it. One thing that I noticed using this with my older GoPros is if you get water droplets to land on the glass dome that's above the water, you can start to see the drops and it starts to give you that aquarium look. Sometimes when you get water droplets on the GoPro itself, it's like so close to the lens that it doesn't always affect it. It's like it either doesn't affect it or it completely ruins your shot. Whereas if you get water droplets on this, it doesn't necessarily ruin the shot, it just cheapens it in a way. So I find that, you know, dipping this underwater and just constantly having it to where, you know, the water is draining as quickly as possible gives you the best shots. But unfortunately, I didn't get to use this on this project. So there you go, some of my favorite accessories for the GoPro. I really enjoyed getting back to this GoPro because honestly, this little thing, I thought, you know, it was a novelty. We've had this for years, but man, this GoPro 11, is amazing. I love this front facing camera because you can now see yourself and frame up the shot perfectly. And if you're you know, filming people who aren't camera conscious, they can look at this and say, oh, I'm in the shot or not. I had a couple of the kite boarders that were able to reach down and pull the camera back into place, which was really useful. But uh, I'm impressed with this. And I think these were some of the most fun shots that we captured through our four night stay on this mega yacht. And I'm really excited to see how the final video turns out. Of course, the drone shots with the Mavic they look incredible. Like those are probably the best, most epic looking shots. But if you have any kind of sports shooting that you need, I still think the GoPro is the number one camera for the job. If you guys enjoy this kind of content, make sure you subscribe to our channel below. We're still trying to hit a million subscribers. If you enjoy reading content, maybe you're at work and can't watch videos like this, head over to fstoppers.com. And if you're a photographer or wanna get into filmmaking, head over to fstoppers.com slash store where you can check out our full link tutorials we have tutorials on all different genres from landscapes to headshots to portraiture. We also created a couple video tutorials. So if this is something that's new to you, check those out and stay tuned because we
we have the brand new Photographing the World 5 with Elia Licardi coming out. We head out to Japan and we take a bunch of awesome photos out there. So that will be coming out very shortly. I will see you guys very soon.